Hey everybody, this is Denny. And this is James from TDB, bringing you guys episode 104. So what do we have today? Uh, we have a Sean uh winter um, uh, green oolong from... Floating leaves again? Taiwan. Yep. Let's drink it up. Yep. Nice and green and fresh. Beautiful looking um, rolled uh, leaves. Really, really big. I don't want to put my, my fingers in there, but... Yeah. Um, so we're going to see those guys unfold a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so some nice high mountain tea. Yeah. Uh, perfect time to be drinking it. Because we're actually in a high mountain in Taiwan right now. We do, we, we've changed the set. Did you see, have you seen Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis? I have not. So he does, he interviews like really famous people and he interviewed Barack Obama. Oh. And it's like the most popular one and anyway, Zach Galifianakis is a ridiculous guy. Oof. Mm. A little bit more uh, nutty than the Pajan we did last episode. Anyways. So they, they do it at the end of the episode. I want to give it a lot away, but I'm going to right now. The curtains of the set fall down. It's always just a black curtain, two ferns, and then the two people, right? In between two ferns. <clears throat> these episode, these, these uh, interviews. So the curtains fall down, and they're in the Oval Office with Barack Obama in the White House, because they got to do it there, right? And so Zach Kalvinakis plays it off like, I can't believe we've been filming this in the you know, White House the whole time. Check it out. It's really funny. Barack Obama makes fun of Zach Galifianakis for not being the president. Zach Galifianakis says some weird stuff about health care. Good stuff. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> back to uh, Taiwan. <laughs> Woo. And we're back. Yep. Um, so, brewing method, styles, uh, time of year to drink this. Give me the whole spiel. Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of these really good Taiwanese oolongs are pretty forgiving as far as like brewing parameters and stuff like that. What wow, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one, one of the leaves. <laughs> way back. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> we both reacted. Yeah, um, yeah. Hey, that's strange. It's like a rogue leaf in there. It's totally a rogue leaf. <laughs> um, so any time of year, drinking this, just kind of whatever it makes your fancy. <laughs> yeah. I tend to like greener teas, lighter, not lighter is the wrong word, but less, like, uh, deep flavor, maybe. Um, those, like, less earthy flavors. Um, it's crisper. It's crisp, yep. More floral. Yeah, yeah. More um, uh, time fresh dependent around this kind of time of year. Cheers. Yep. Cheers. Mmm. It's more creamy. The Baojong, creamy, light. I like the mouthfeel. It's nice and silky texture. Mm -hmm. There's something about these high mountain teas. Um, there's like a very specific taste for them. That's kind of like this cool, refreshing, crisp air almost yeah. to it. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to describe sometimes, but there's definitely like a very mm. distinct taste that are in some of these Taiwanese. Uh, mm, this one's really, really friendly. Um... Crisp, definitely, but whereas the Baojong from last episode, I would almost think of kind of mid-cooling-ish sort of a tea, this feels more like a warming tea. Interesting. To me, for some reason. Um, yeah, and it has a little bit of a, um, a more, I mean, I mean the, the sort of uh, um, milk sweetness, uh, I'm trying to say... Uh, not lactose, but lactase, lactic acid. What is the sugar in milk? Isn't it lactic acid? Is that... Lactic acid is what happens when you your muscles use sugar. Oh. Okay. Um, the milk sugar. The milk sugar. <laughs> we well, uh, go with that. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Look at how full that mofo is. And zero screen, see? Yep, and it just shows you how big some of these uh, leaves can expand to. Mm. Mm. This one's a little bit more, um, parts of it are more subtle. I think it's a little bit less verdant and a little bit more, like I was saying, a little bit more creamy, a little bit more um, milk sweetness. It almost has a milk oolong character to it, some sort of yeah. shade. Would you call this tea floral at all? Um, yeah. 
Yes. Such it's like floral in a different sort of way than the Baljong. Definitely. It has it's um yeah, I don't it's not as um it's gonna sound weird saying this, but it's it's like drinking if you're gonna be drinking a plant, it's like you're not drinking the the Baljong is more of like the stems and the verdant leaf leafy characteristic. This is more like the flowers and the sweet pollen that you would get. Hmm. Um, so I think this is a, a a little bit more sweet. I think it's a little bit more uh, mild, interestingly enough, and creamy. So, but really enjoying it. I think that actually creaminess tends to come out more in the winter um, from the ones that I've had. Uh, so I wonder if that will have an impact overall. That's in an interesting person. observation. I haven't consumed enough Hainan <laughs> tea recently to really say. Um, but I'd say compared to the Baljong, at least, uh, kind of like Denny was talking about, the Baljong is more obvious in a lot of ways. I think this has like a really nice, uh, big, round profile uh, to compare. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it has a few characteristics that are just really, really nice. Um, and so, I don't know. I mean, comparing the two teas and saying which one's better is kind of difficult just because they are totally different teas. I like them both, um, mm. for sure. Yeah. Mm. This one's really nice. In terms of um, body, what do you think for Baojong versus this? I think this is bigger. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially at these steeps. Maybe the first one you could argue is a little bit lighter, but uh -huh. I think that's more just because this is unrolling. I think I suspect that I also used a bit exactly. more leaf, which yeah. could be contributing. But I think, to that. but well, but to speaking to that, it this this tea is tolerating a, a completely full gaiwan. You're just holding to the side; you can see the leaves coming out of it. So, and it, oops, oh, and there's the leaves. <laughs> 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 Ooh, those are I hot. Th yeah, I thought that was gonna stay in. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. All right, we're gonna burn the living crap out of ourselves here. <laughs> um, now, Bloopers. some some people think that if you touch the tea leaves or if you interact with the cup, if you aren't you know if you aren't using surgical latex gloves, you're singing. Um, that's completely ridiculous in my mind. I don't think people really realize what's going on in at the farm. You know what I'm saying? And people are so distracted away from it. It's like people who are afraid of, um, they'll eat meat, but they won't, like, um, uh, dismember a chicken, which is a really intense word for it. But, like, you know, taking a chicken apart, like, that's too intense for some people. Yeah. Like, and, you know, they want it to be this, like, you yeah. know, clean... I don't eat chicken liver. I don't eat the organs or something like that. Anyway. Yeah. Th this is a dirty, messy plant that we're consuming, and we drink it in a very polished way, but at the ground floor <laughs> is... Uh, is this our rationalization for just tossing that these all over the That is a <laughs> three-minute yeah. rationalization that I'm very proud of, by the way. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm liking the body. There's no hint of astringency on this. Um, and for the amount of leaf and off of the boil, um, this is great. I think this will go for quite a, a while. Yep. Um, but it will peter out quicker than a, a pooer would. Um, uh, yeah. And I think that's a testament, uh, not the longevity part, but I think it's a testament that it's not bitter and astringent to its sort of quality. Yeah. Um, like these really, really nice high mountain oolongs, you can stuff that guy one full, even more than this potentially, and hit it really hard for a long amount of time and you're just going to get like a very full taste uh it's not exactly the best bang for your buck to do that but uh it can be really nice yeah and it will reveal in the same way that doing a, a cold brew with no hot water at all will reveal different characteristics different flavors yep um using super short steeping times all the same way and, you know, I mean, experiment, brew, however you want to brew, yep. um, and it probably will yield different results. I mean, for instance, we noticed the body was significantly altered as a result of using more tea leaves, but the the, the quality of the flavors weren't too intense at all, so yep. play with it. And I actually think that this tea, there is a hint of astringency, finally. Um, I think we pushed it just enough that you're getting a little bit of that, but well, it's, it's not at it's all. It's really subtle. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, small. I mean, yeah, to, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's uh, hinting is the right word, yeah. for sure. Um, cool. <clears throat> so where can someone find out more about tea? So, um, go and check out Floating Leaves Tea, um, floatingleaves.com. Uh, and check them out if you're in Ballard. Check out Show and Shop. It's awesome. Ballard, Seattle. So, uh, Seattle, yeah. excuse me. Don't um, go to Ballard, Scotland, if that's a thing. Is that a thing? I have no idea. Anyway, um, and <laughs> we there's this really cool website uh, on the internet called TDB. 
subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out online, join our newsletter. Um, we're doing videos, three videos a week. So we do a episode like this, and then we do an in between. So each they're usually a little bit more, uh, my, a little bit more sprawling. Jay's does stay on topic a lot more than I do. Um, and uh, yeah, check us out online and follow and do all that yeah, social do all stuff. That stuff. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Cheers. Cheers.